say a prayer for us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all these three at one time. Uh, we have the budget workshop meeting on 8-4. We have a regular commission meeting on 8-4. And then another budget workshop meeting on 8-11. I need to entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. Second. Uh, so moved by Commissioner Macron. Second by Commissioner Thurston. Mm. Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. I can pass it by vote. All right. All right. Uh, do we have Mr. Bill Kennedy here tonight? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if he comes in, we'll come back to him. He's been busy getting things together. But uh, Nick, I think it'll be city attorney. Uh, not much. The, uh, <coughs> the hospital plan is on the planning board agenda for September, and it'll be on your commission agenda the second meeting in September. Um, so everything's Rock along. Nothing else? That's all I have. All right, Jim. Yes, sir. The first item I have is where to stone drive building permit. At this point, I don't have any additional information. I did touch base with Mr. Mike on the 10th. I believe he's actually here tonight. I'm not sure if he wants to talk on it tonight, but we did touch base on the 10th. I, I have nothing to say, sir. We touched base, and that's between you and I. Okay. Uh, anybody else on this issue tonight? Unless you want to vote to rescind the, <laughs> uh, unless you want to vote to rescind the uh, stop well, we can't do that. <laughs> uh, you know, because there is, is some legalities there, from my understanding, on the foundation that has been deemed that what you have there now is not a structure that we see fit for a modular home. Which, so I don't know exactly where they're going to go. Was with that that David Brad? Uh, uh, Bo Carrill. Mr. Carrill. Mr. Carrill. He came back to us and said that that what we had originally is not a permanent structure for a modular home, modular foundation. So yeah, I haven't heard that. So that's we're in there, and I, okay. I know you and Jim have been talking on some issues, and yes, we would give a hand. We'll try to expedite this thing as fast as possible. You know, so both sides can be happy. Hopefully. I hope so. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, nothing else on that, Jim. What else you got? Uh, yes, sir. The next item I have is in reference to the budget. Uh, we did hold a meeting today because we're still waiting on our insurance information to come back. So we got two big things we got to work through the budget to get completed on there. Uh, what our insurance numbers are going to be, and we have Burton and Associates coming next week on the 25th. They will be here at 1 o'clock to give a presentation to you as to uh, the rate study update for you next Tuesday, the 25th of August. Also, keep in mind your first public hearing for your first vote on the budget is scheduled for September the 10th at 5.01 p.m. We'll be scheduled the second vote for your finalization of the budget as soon as we have the date from the county. The county gets first pick on it. The school board, my understanding, will be completing theirs on the 8th. The, uh, school, the county has their first hearing on the 9th, but they need to set that date for their final, and then we get to choose that. Jim, will certain associates be... Uh are they going to help us, or is that something done with staff to come up with what it costs to make a guy on the water and treat it the cost per? Are they involved in that we process? We talked to them about it. It's, it's a very complicated process. In the, okay, are you talking about delivery to St. Joe Beach, or are you going to talk about delivery to um, a new industrial user that's within a block away from the plant? So those are the kind of things we started talking through it. But very convoluted on there. They, their best suggestion to you was that utilize the, you have a tiered system for water based on one, zero through 3,000 gallons, three to six, six to nine. They said the best number is to utilize the cost per thousand gallons in the second tier is what, is what they indicated to us. And that's, and that's what we're going to try to do with staff, just to try you to go through that. that. You could. That's something we need to talk about. Well, I mean, we presented our I mean, right now, how are we doing our write-off policy? Based on a six-month average. 
So that's something we would need approval from you if you want to do that. It would go to, I'm trying to remember the number, somewhere, I think it was around $6 or something, a thousand gallons. Do you remember mine? No, it, the, uh, that tier was $4.81. <coughs> okay. So if you were to move to that, it would be $4.81 for all those gallons if you're doing the write-off on instead of doing the six-month gallon. I've got any information on that. Derek, you've got any information on that? Yeah, I think that's what Mike can do. I'll show that. Is that based on what? 3,000 gallons? No, sir. You have tiers. Each 1,000 gallons up to 3,000 gallons has a has a specific dollar amount. And then when you get 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 gallons, it has a specific per 1,000 gallons. And then six, and then seven, eight, nine, and then you have another. It's tiered as the the idea was if you conserve water, not to pay as much per 1,000 gallons for the play of the structure. And, and while we're on this, I've been looking at the uh, write-offs lately. I haven't had that many. We've had a few in the month of August. Uh, but I just want to reiterate to everybody that you must have a certified plumber fix it. I had a guy the other day. He had a whole, whole list of plumbing supplies. He had bought but didn't have a certified plumber. I denied it. I don't know what he's going to say. I haven't heard yet. But, I mean, I said you didn't have all your stuff in a row. So I want to be sure that people know you do have to have a certified plumber do the work. Right now, it's based on a six-month average, and you can only do it once in a 12-month billing cycle. I really once. believe that we did a grave injustice two weeks ago when we changed that water right off policy to the people of our community. I just want to go on record to say it now. All right, the next item we have is a reference to the boat ramp improvements. Uh, a few meetings back, we decided to do a step down on our existing boat ramp that we made repairs to earlier this year. I've contacted Mr. Colson. We have issued a check to him for the materials. He is currently working on the seawall, and as soon as he gets done, he'll set us a time where he can come back to do complete boat ramp. Uh, the last item I have under old business is Municode <coughs> update. Uh, Municode has updated your website for you. If you go to municode.com, Municode.com, you'll be able to pull up City of Port St. Joe and see your updated code is up to date through, I think, on it's 515. Uh, you can also, if you're bringing your book to us, we have the insert for the additions that are changes been made. Staff will be more than happy to put those packages together for you and make them look okay. On to new business. The first item I have is a library request. The library has requested that we um, put a note on our water bill. Uh, since it is a little bit outside of city business, we want to make sure you're okay with doing it for the library. They had, had a, um, a note that they wanted to put on there for, for the public. It's on page 7. It would actually be a link. For a survey. Any relation on this, Jim? Yes, sir. Since it is outside of city business, I think it probably be used because it is going to be a link onto the city. It's not a problem with that, y'all. You know, I don't see a problem with the library. It's a public library. So I move. Uh, I have a motion by Commissioner Macron. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Ashbrook. I just discuss? like to discuss something. All right. Uh, I'm completely fine with doing this for the library. I think the library does a great thing. I just want to be sure that the next time somebody from the public or a public um, this franchise or like the library or something that we'll be able to do it for them also. That's all I got, mate. Okay, we have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Close like sign. This one passes five up. Next item we had is Mr. Tom Haddock. Mr. Tom Haddock's had a uh, very lengthy <coughs> career with the city of Port St. Joe. We show our appreciation for Mr. Haddock. He done a fine job for the city. If you didn't know Mr. Haddock, he's the one to help maintain the city and make sure it was clean on our roadside. So he, he done a good job for it. Uh, tonight, what we have for you, Mr. Haddock didn't take too much time off. So he's asking for pay out of his annual leave of sick leave. Uh, he actually has more than would be eligible on there, but what we're looking at is for 520 hours of sick leave and 220 of annual leave. Okay, John, Jim. That's half recommended. Yes. Okay, second. All right, last well, started. Uh, we had a first by who? Me. 
First by Commissioner Thursby, second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. 4-0. 4-0. I'm sorry. Commissioner Brzezinski is not here tonight. In case y'all don't see him there, he's not here. The next item we have is a reference to the museum property. This is something we've talked about for a couple of years as to what the city's ambition was for the property, including the whole complex with the Centennial Building. The mayor and I met with Mr. Donald Fergione from the, he's the director of the Florida Park Services. He came down and spoke with us a couple weeks ago and he pretty much told us that if it's something the city's interested in, he would definitely further discussion, come down and meet with you and do a presentation to you and help in any way he can. The bigger thing is, if you're going to try to move forward on this, you've got to figure out some funding for the White House Keeper's Court. We've applied for a grant last year. We did not receive, we were not successful and did not receive funding for it. We did submit again this year for another $125,000 with a 10% match. Yes, sir. $12,500, I believe. That's a lengthy time off of a year, year and a half. So if we're going to, first we need to decide if this is something the board's interested in moving forward on. Number two, how are we going to come up with the funding to complete the project? I think maybe after the budget cycle, maybe we could all sit down and workshop this thing and bounce some ideas off of each other. I would like to see the White House Keeper's Court start getting some attention. Maybe get them a little bit better before the next season comes around. And then if we win and if we get the money, then we can really do some stuff. One time I remember Mayor Patterson brought up maybe some volunteer work and maybe some fundraising, get some fundraising groups together, just do whatever. I'd be glad to help any way I could on some of that type of stuff. Ms. Charlotte, have you been in contact with people anymore about wanting to help do something? They have offered to help, but we don't have a plan totally mapped out yet. We've asked for some quotes, bids, what people think it would take. Several have already gotten back with me. Some have not. I can follow up with that tomorrow. But hopefully be able to do it in phases and know what it would cost and see what we would need to do each phase. You know, I can visualize back several years ago how under the Oaks Park over in Parker, how they brought the material in, advertised, and they just had several weekends where the whole community came out and worked on it. I'd love to see us maybe be able to get something like that set up and see if it would work anyway before we just say it wouldn't. We'll talk about all this maybe someday and work on it. I'll follow up on those who were supposed to get back with me but have not. Thank you. Last item I have tonight under new business is vacant lots. Mayor Patterson, may I talk to you tonight about it? Yes, I do. I've had several residents ask me about certain places that used to be clean as a whistle, but over the years, for some reason, who it may be, we've let those places grow up. First place that comes to my mind is on the corner of Woodward Avenue and First Street. The person has a business there, and he said when he first went there, it was as clear as a lot that's across the street from it that Mr. Curtis Little got there on us. His lot is very clean, but the lot across from his, right beside this place of business, has grown up so bad, and I just wonder how we let things like that happen. They aren't the only one. Another one that comes to mind is the Catholic Church. They got a big fence, a whole block, fenced in. Used to be fairly clean. Now you can't hardly see through it. It's so dense with growth. And again, how do we let things like this happen? Next place that comes to my mind automatically is the St. Joe Company. They've got a lot of land at one time. It didn't look like it looks today. But we haven't done anything to correct anybody. And the one place I mentioned first, I mean, the person that's got a business there, he said now he can't look across and see the road, First Street, and he's a little afraid of burglaries happening. He said he's been seeing plenty of snakes and all come out of there. So, Jim, I don't know what we've got to do. We've got to contact the owners of this property. And, you know, I'm not just talking about cutting a little bit of grass. I'm talking about taking down the bushes, the pine trees that's grown up. Not big pine trees, just small pine trees, but they've grown all up over the place. And it's really not fair to that individual that's got that business there 
they have to look at that and have to worry about all kind of snakes and all coming around and burglary maybe. And I'm sure if you want to ride by there, if you look at Mr. Little's lot, it's clean as a whistle. He's got two trees on it. <laughs> but other than that, the grass is cut and eat. He keeps it that way. <clears throat> and uh, I just want us to see what we can do about talking to some of these other people before we have to take some action and make them clean it up. We can. We can do those kind of things. If we can get support of the board, if the board wants us to do those kind of things, you probably need to put some teeth in your ordinance. Your ordinance in there right now talks about grass, excessive grass, 8 to 12 inches tall, talks about underbrush. Those kind of things we can go after easily, but when you start getting into land clearing and those kind of things, we can do it. If y'all want to give us some teeth in your ordinance and support the staff on that, because we do have quite a few vacant lots, but we can do it with y'all support. I just wonder how we let it get so bad. Well, well, something wasn't done. Mayor, I see a problem, and I even told uh, our, uh, Richie one day, I said, you know, I've got a real big problem with us going down and getting these mom and pops people down on, say, Woodward Avenue for their grass, when we can't make the St. Joe Company clean up that mess out there that they got. So until they, we make everybody start abiding by the grass cutting, then there's really nothing we can do. We can't single out people, and I feel like, in a way, I know the fact people that's gotten rode up for a little bit, of and it's probably what Jim said, you know, the ordinance is different, that it's easier to get one to do it than it is another. But until they start cleaning up, it's going to be hard to put any teeth in making anybody else do it. Just something for us to think about. I mean, I've had several residents call me and ask me about it. And, uh, I want to get rich and go by there and try to put fear or something in some of these people and make them clean a lot. So. Yeah, y'all want, want us to bring you back in order? It's got some teeth in for you. We can look into it. I, I just want to mention it tonight because it's heavy mentioned to me by some. I like to comment on the article too with the discussion. Mr. Patterson. Come up to the podium, please. Amy Rogers, I'd like to come in on the issue that you just spoken about, the cleanup. I think it's very much right to start with uh, St. Joe Company because they own most of the vacant lots and a lot of them is all um, grassy and growing up. You look at Highway 98, I approached the board several years ago about 98 and Avenue A. It's like a division of the community when you, you can tell uh, instantly when you hit North Port St. Joe, leaving from out of uh, CBS Pharmacy, that little road come from out here to Avenue A. All that is going, you can't even see around the field looking straight down. So I think that instead of these little small mom and pop people, look at St. Joe and then look at the issue on the neighborhood where I live at, all around that area, the house, the lot across the street, snakes, bears, and everything. Bears just sit up in the yard now and we just stay in the house when they do come out. But I think this commissioner is correct and I support you 100% of whatever I could do to get other people interested and help out with the cleanup of uh, doing something like that. I'd be more than glad. We need to do that to get it all cleaned up in the, in the community. But small, with small, starting that small mom and pop and this person, that person, I don't think we'll go too far with that. We won't get that far with it. I don't need to but being saying that too now, I do want to go on the record and say and it's not a jab at St. Joe Company. I can care less if it was Boeing or anybody else that owned a piece of property, all I'm saying is, is everybody needs to abide by the law. If one's going to do it, so does everybody else. I've got a lot of friends that work with the St. Joe Company. It's not a knock at them at all. It's just uh, the facts. So that's all i got. All right. Nick, over the Oh, time out. Time out. we got time later, Jim. Yeah. I wasn't planning on saying anything, but while y'all were talking about cleaning up these vacant lots, we got lots and lots that aren't vacant that need to be cleaned up, mm -hmm. like over next to my house. Well, they've done a lot of cleaning there, though. Yeah, they've they been mowing. There. They've been riding around with the lawnmower, and over on Woodward, there's still some. But I did snap a couple of photos today. They're trying to sell every property, right? Yeah. This is uh, my next door. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, yep, that's mine. Is that snakes. the one they got? Yeah. Yeah. Snakes and the rats. Yeah. I think the best thing to do is then hurry up and sell it. Well, you know. <laughs> 
she come and clean everything out of there, Claire? No. She cleaned a lot of She went down clean. the two corners that yeah. everybody drives by. She didn't clean the fence line. She didn't yeah. clean down my side. So, and the fence line cross points going back. <coughs> but anyway, so while we're doing vacant lots, there's a bunch of nasty ones that people have property to. Uh, exactly right. You're, I mean, you're right. I, we we got to get a hold of this whole situation. Yeah. And I, I honestly don't believe getting a you know more teeth on an ordinance is going to help us if we can't enforce the ones that we currently have. I think you know it's going to take some enforcement and follow through. Somebody's going to have to pay a fine before they figure out we're serious and you know, keep it cleaned up. Uh, that means having a magistrate meet every quarter, whatever we have to do. Uh, if we're not going to follow through, just slap them on the hand. They're going to do it again. And I agree with that. <clears throat> All right. Okay, John. Hey, well, man. I'll keep this thing moving. You're doing good. <laughs> um, Cape Sewer Extension, just a quick update. Gator Boring uh, arrived in town this afternoon about 3 o'clock. Uh, so that project will kick off in the morning. Uh, I anticipate them being done by Friday. So we're still on track with us starting next week. Um, it's our plan to go ahead and finish. Um, Sapaville Lane first, and get that cleared, and hopefully Clay can get a partial clearance on that for us, and then we'll build the, the Hemingway Court last. There's no users there, so it doesn't doesn't matter. We'll try to get Sapaville online quickly. Um, but that's it. Unless there's any questions from the board, have y'all be y'all being out there generated any more potential customers? Have you heard anything just by them? Yeah, well, that could be on the ground starting this week. Okay. Uh, so really had a lot of activity. Yeah. Yeah. I just no. wondered if maybe we're going to start seeing some. No. Okay. So that's that's the update for that. There's no more questions. Uh, the patent parts on the business, just real quick. You know, we finished our work last week, cut it, um, which was really, really high. So we cut, we cut that down last week. So we're basically done. So it's, it's up to the board and uh, folks to. I would come in there. If you got some good ideas on some advertising, we're going to spend a lot of money or what, Jim? It's quite pricey. The peer started <coughs> asking about it. We kind of got shocked with some of the prices. Yes, we do have some prices. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Unless you have any questions. Any questions for John? Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Please take my swing. Thank you. Take my swing set for the uh, lady after that. Yeah, let's verify that. Not at your house, though. Sound is like. All right. What's this water plan? Where? Uh, I don't really have a report in that. I just have some questions for me. We're doing good. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate it. As an update, too, we did receive the bids in for the line <laughs> retreat and for the construction side on it. This week we'll receive the other bids for the actual distribution line, so hopefully we'll have a clear picture by the end of the week and have it to you in the next four weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, where's water? <coughs> I don't have anything tonight either unless there's questions. I got one thing. Okay. It's stinking in Highland View today. Mm -hmm. I got a call or two. Yeah, it was yesterday it started again, and yeah, that guy through my pants that I wore out. David came out there and got a nice bird's eye view and smell of it out on the porch to leave because I couldn't even leave him in the house. <laughs> but all six sonic units are in and operable and so hopefully in, in you know four or five weeks we'll, we'll see. How long have they been in now? I, not even a week. We got the last one installed I think last Friday. So, so how long does it take land before we start seeing it? Well as thick as it is it'd probably be four to six weeks before you'll even be able to see anything. Okay. So, you know, just pray for the wind direction to change. We'll put some out of you. Yeah. We've been fortunate most of the summer we've had a west wind. So, right now, we'll be able to change. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. That's not a question. Eric, that's good. Thank you. Take this to get away that quick. Uh, tell me a little bit about the hospital. As far as getting a lot ready to be sold, where we at with that? Just on September PRP, I guess it's their pro approval process. Uh, so you had to play that about ready, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Covenants are done. Everything's, yeah, ready. everything's ready to go to the PDRB. It's advertised for their meeting on the eighth. Okay. Thank you. Yes.
code enforcement and look in your packet see what code enforcement's been doing. I personally think Richie is doing a very adequate job. There's a lot out there. I mean, but I know he is out there looking at stuff and writing things up. But he gives them a report every week still on what he's been doing, which house he's been buying, what happened on it, follow up on it, sending me pictures of things that need to be picked up that he sends to John. <coughs> we've been right on top of getting it whenever we need to get it. So we just we'll have to stay on top of it because people are going to put trash out. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it. On the Code Enforcement Activity Report, I was looking on here, I see one late, uh, land regulation violation that I haven't been noticing. Can somebody fill me in on what that is? I'm not sure. I'll stop my head. We can just call Richie and I'll find out. Okay. Have y'all noticed that? Is that something well, missed or is yeah. that new? It looks like there's been eight of them and seven of them have been closed <coughs> down and then that one is open. <coughs> All right. Let's see it on code enforcement. Please call. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have anything either unless you as board has questions of me. What about our uh, <coughs> changing that yield sign to a stop sign down here on Monument in 98? We come in together, we, we spoke about doing that maybe. It, it's something we can look at doing. Um, we can do some research. I know in seven months we we haven't had that I'm aware of an accident there, but I know it's it's been brought up several times. Yeah, I, I had several people tell me they've had close calls. You know, uh, at the League of Cities this past week, I picked up in that exhibit thing some uh, <coughs> sign, little, some new sign type stuff. And maybe you would, I gave John Grantland, I went by and saw him this morning. He, I think, was like the idea. <coughs> maybe that would be something you might want to share and y'all look at one day together and let Matt look at that because there's some areas that it may help him too. Might even be able to make a few bucks off of Matt, John, when you start ordering him some. You mark them up a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Not much. Now, there are some good um, ideas you. there, though, maybe. Yeah. 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 Because where that intersection lies is going to be on that DOT road. So we have to get the state engaged if we want to look at that. Right. Right. Our burglaries come along. We saw them. We've, we've got a suspect for our four. Okay. There have been some car burglaries around town. Yeah. You, so. you got a car, keep it locked up. It's easy to get into when it's not locked. <coughs> I mean, most of these have been unlocked. All, all four of them were answered. It was four, and all four were not locked. So, maybe have been more if you had the doors locked. <laughs> maybe it's a blessing. <laughs> all right, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk. I just wanted to mention to you we're starting to formulate our plans for Ghost on the Coast, which will be Saturday, October 31st. Our Christmas parade this year will be on Saturday, December the 12th. Wanted to mention to you that we need to reach out to some organizations, different individuals who helped us last year financially, uh, like the ribbons, the trophies, different things we used at both events. The Shriners have committed to our Christmas parade this year. We want to try to raise some funds to help feed them the day of. So with your blessings, we will proceed with that. Can you get us a list of some of the things that we might be able to use the need in Charlotte so that, I, you know, look, we good talk with these businesses and get them. I know, like, late last year, I was able to get Waste Pro to bring us some stuff. And, you know, that was on the candy field. Maybe we can get somebody else to do some of the trophies and that type of stuff. We have a, someone who has committed to the ribbon, <coughs> excuse me, the ribbons for the Christmas parade. And we have someone that will be coming to town soon that we will ask if they would provide for the Ghost on the Coast trophies again this year, but certainly we can come up with some other opportunities. Okay. Charles, you said uh, the 12th? 
Yes, sir, Saturday, December the 12th. All right, sir. That's all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you have something else? No, sir, I have nothing else. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, citizens be heard. Any citizens want to be heard? Thank you. A couple items here. Want to, um, I'll expand a little bit on that um, 98 and Avenue A. Just want to make it very clear now. St. Joe Company cut the grass on Avenue A along around that back in that way. But what I'm particularly talking about is Highway 98 and Avenue A. As you turn towards Avenue A, that little portion they went by and the um, uh, the people that does the what, what do you call it? They do the landscaping. And I think the downtown improvement group or someone's time we approached the board and they fixed that up all real nice from first street all the way back with the flowers and everything. But the wooded area with all the trees and all the stuff that grows up, when you get closer to highway, uh, get close to Avenue Way as you leave CBS Farm, all of that debris is there. You can't even see over on the north Hang side. Hang on, I know what you're talking about. I brought that up a couple of times. You did? That little station there. That station. You're talking about no. right there, like if you're walking down the sidewalk and headed that way right. on the right, right hand side. Yeah. 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 Is that Joe Company? Well, I think the right away is actually where it's grown up there. It's on the right of way. No, you sure? Uh, no, it's on the lot. They didn't fix it. Behind the sidewalk. Yeah, behind the sidewalk, right okay. there. Yeah. That's we try to cut back three or four or five feet or so just to keep it off the sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's on the same good. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So we can put that on the list to get that taken care of. Oh, yes, ma'am. The other issue is, uh, I think we need to, well, we need to get a, a workshop, a board of a housing workshop, a housing workshop. So I think a, a lot of the people are confused about affordable housing and low income. I think a workshop would kind of explain it to them the difference between affordable housing and low income housing. And as I read in the paper and attended some of the meetings and talked to some of the individuals, they are kind of confused. And I thought if we could just get a workshop on housing and uh, discuss that and let everyone bring out some of the issues that they're concerned about. Then we can kind of get a little bit more. I think there was another one planned, was it? And Mr. Dumas told us last. Uh, Dumas, here. Would yes, you sir, like to address you. this? Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. He, he, he is the head man. <laughs> May I, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, sir. Come on up. Mark the head man, Ms. Amy. How you doing, ma'am? Mark Dumas. Okay. Last time it was a Rick. Rick came. Yeah. Yes, taller than me. I'm the running one. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Mark Dumas, Paces Foundation out of Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you. Um, just briefly, affordable housing uh, is meant to be affordable to persons who earn between eight and sixteen dollars an hour is the wage income. If they've got some other income they can supplement it with, that's happy. But I mean that's fine. But if they go over sixteen dollars, we can't rent to them. If they have less than eight, we don't dare. And nobody gives us a rent check. In other words, some of the housing here is subsidized. They get rent checks. We don't. Uh, so if we don't have a happy resident, they can go live anywhere else. And there are a lot of other um, houses in the city that they can go and rent from. But now, Mark, this, this will not qualify for Section 8, would it? No, this is not a, what you call project-based Section 8. Now, federally, the federal law mandates we cannot turn away someone who happens to have some other form of so, subsidy, like Social Security, for example, or a Section 8 voucher, but that comes out of Mariana. But no, we have none of that nature at our property. Are you welcome to uh, Housing Workshop to discuss it? Oh, yes, ma'am. We intend to hold another one tonight for a couple of days before the um, project review board will meet. And that date has been set, I understand, not we for work September. Work. I know Mr. Career was planning on getting the letter out today to you on the final items of the planning board, but yes, he was saying, I believe he was trying to shoot for the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. That's correct. That's what we understand. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As far as we know right now, that will be the date. If anything changes, we'll be sure that you know the thing. See, what, what needs to take place prior to that meeting is that we, the city commissioners, we need to have a workshop on. See, there's another avenue here we can bring in. Um, some other help. So we need to look at some uh, issues of trying to apply for um, the housing, Port St. Joe Housing Authority. Do that housing authority, do Department of Community Affairs, some other agencies that will come in to help us raise money to subsidize some of the income that a person who uh, not able to fit the 
uh, uh, money, income level that he just spoken out. There's a lot of people in our community, poor folks, that is a part of this economy. They just don't have their money. They cannot afford a one-room apartment for $400 a month or six, seven hundred, and they need that subsidy. So I'm thinking that if the uh, city commission will have a workshop working with the citizens that's interested, we can find out how many people fall in that category, contact the uh, partner of community affairs and say, hey, we need some help here. We want to get more houses to accommodate everyone in the community. Uh, are you talking more support. about senior citizens? No, I'm talking about anybody with <laughs> low income. Low income. He said the price of his those apartments was. See, but this is not low income. No, 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 no. That, we that's don't want it saying. to be low income. I know. That's why we need a housing workshop for those individuals that need who is without housing. But that need would have to a come way to get another in. Another time. See, if we along with this time. Excuse me. See, that would have to come at a different time, not along with the project here. That's right? what I'm saying. That's what I said earlier. We need to have a meeting before this meeting that he has, because this meeting that he has. The poor folks really wouldn't have a chance. And the way the poor folks can have a chance is our elected officials that we vote in will have some time for the citizens who need to be heard and we can hear each other and find out these are our needs right here. We need to establish, once we find establish a Port St. Joe, either the county housing authority, they can look, once we get established, they can look and work with people within the community to come up with and go and ask for state grants. You can apply. Because as many years, I don't, the city had applied for a CBG block grant okay. in housing ever since I think in the early 90s or in the 80s. So uh, under the housing authority, we can get some of this help for those other people. Other than that, you know, we're looking at people with a certain amount of income can only enter into the apartments that he's building. And now uh, I live right across the street from the land that you are supposed to build these apartments. I want to see people in and out of the community to be able to move in those apartments. You know, and I want to see everyone treated fairly. I don't want to just cut out the poor and just have a set of partners just for a, cer a certain group of people. Right. But with with this people. plan he's bringing us, we, we can't do that. This this is not a plan to do that. Now, he is maybe planning on building some senior citizen units later after this initial unit comes. And uh, it may be the people you're talking about that we've been there. Well, I, some, of may, some may, but not all. Right. But I'm saying that he just made it very clear that he's not turning down nobody. So you know, he's not going to turn down the Section 8 if they come. And there's, tell me very clearly, there's a way that we can work everybody in. Mm -hmm. But if we establish, you look into the possibility of a housing authority and look at some of the grants that's available. Like we picked up our last CBG G block grant money. We invested, you know, we looked into the uh, water. Picked the water and the uh, sewages, and that's what we have done. I don't know how much time we got on it, but mm -hmm. still, the Department of Community Affairs have. Uh, funding that will kind of help in a situation like this. So we've been without decent housing and safe housing for over years. So it's a possibility. That's what I'm saying. We want right. to try to get a. I just know, don't know if it'll fit in with his project. And maybe yes, he can tell us about it. That's right. No, sir. This is this is a very narrow project mm -hmm. funded by the state, it, it, and it's for people that have an income between eight and sixteen dollars an hour. It's just the way that their funds are. But I'll be happy to talk mm -hmm. with you afterwards. And share with you what I know about Section 8 subsidized yeah. housing. If you buy it, okay. it's me picking my car. Okay, but now, so do we still have a meeting to discuss? We still need to take care of the poor. You know, I agree saying? with you, but I don't think it will have anything to do with his project. But I don't know what would help us to have a meeting but if, prior to his meeting. So I'm just okay. Just I mean, this will be a whole different game you're talking about, man. But I do agree with you that we need to get together and be looking yeah. for some. some I mean, it's fine, Ridge. That's subsidized housing. Yes, right. it's subsidized. Yeah. I mean, it's a subsidized so, project. Yeah. And what, what did you tell me? What did you just say about subsidized? If someone come in? Um, what did you just say? If you have, for example, if you have, if you receive government assistance, such as Social Security income, and that's all your income is, and if it equates to the minimum standard of eight dollars an hour. We will rent to you, but if your income drops below that, we don't dare rent to you for fear that the resident may not be able to pay the rent. Now, under what they call the Section 8 voucher program, which is administrated for this region out of Mariana, um, they have to go to Mariana and make application, and it's very competitive because it covers this whole region of the state. They can then get a, a certificate or a voucher of Section 8, and then they can bring back to us and if otherwise they qualify, 
and that is the equivalent of $8 or more an hour, then we can take them as a resident. But they have to have some form of subsidy of that nature. Some now, we are not like the Pine project. That developer, those developers, receive a rent check from the government regardless. Mm -hmm. And they all they have to do is find a person to put in there. And then that person may not have anything, and the, the owner of that property has got the subsidy from the government and can provide them <coughs> the rent. We don't have that. It's very clear that he there's a set. Uh, he's at a set standard. Yeah. Very My concern is he did say if the subsidy would come from any other source. Mm -hmm. So we develop a source of other income coming in to help with the payment. You would turn me down if I'm fit in the Social Security and I uh, come up a little short. Then I can go into another resource and get some money to come up with my rent payment. Well, but we we're we're. We would have to look at the credit worthiness of that other source, and that's just like any bank when it's giving a homeowner a mortgage. Would have to look at whether they're credit worthy and whether that other source, be it an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent, is actually going to be there no, for I'm the course. I was looking more like a nonprofit organization, as we set up. No, ma'am, not really. I mean, I could I could go through the details with you, and I'll be happy to do that, but not really. It has to be a really reliable source of income, such as Social Security Administration. But I'm telling you, I, I don't even know. It's just like having somebody, it's almost like an alien. You know, you having some people move over in your neighborhood, and a lot of the people from that same neighborhood credit have credit issues, and a lot of folks all over town have credit issues with the depression that uh, mm -hmm. St. Joe Company and the meal shutting down, and Arizona Chemicals shutting down, and a lot of people have credit issues. And I don't know if a project would be just great for the community if it just can't fit the people here in the community. Well, well this is for the people in the community. I know, that but work. under those right. circumstances and what he's ex describing, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but I don't know who else. You're like you're building something and waiting for someone to come in the community to take advantage of what you have to offer. Well, well, well respectfully, and I don't want to digress, does the commission <laughs> mind if I continue, commissioners? Uh, Council. We'll let you allow you to vote, and maybe y'all might have to speak after the meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll be well, happy we, to we talk with you okay. 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 Thank you. All right. All right. Just want to be educated. Uh -huh. Okay. The other issue is um, I am, uh, there is on, on the Avenue A and Bay Street. Our uh, street sign is not there. It's gone. I don't know if you guys might have picked it up and decided to go back and, because they had it like Bay Street, but it's North Bay Street, because we have a Bay Street on St. Joe Beach as well. Right. And how soon could we get our sign put back up? I'm sure John is writing that down right now. <laughs> 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 He'll work on it for you. Okay. And the other issue is I read with deep interest the article in the paper by Modular Homes in the community affecting the Modular Homes now. My concern is that it seems like the issue just jumped to two conclusions before everything is fixed. And I want to say that the uh, the building inspector here in Port St. Joe and me purchasing my marginal home in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it wasn't for the city of Port St. Joe building inspection, that department, I would have been up the creek without a paddle. They helped me generously with my <coughs> marginal home. But my, my marginal home, and I went right by the orders, followed the rules, and compliance with everything uh, with my marginal home. And I don't see, it seems like to me, it's like, like, almost like a double standard, a different in treatment, because I live on the north side, and this other home, this uh, proposed modular home, is on 102 on the south side, and it should not be no difference in treatment, a double standard. Whatever apply in the city rules and following the regulation, it should apply all over. Now, why was I was able to put my modular home down, and the other issue is being stopped? And I did everything like I suppose I followed state laws. My modular home came stamped in from state, and my boards are all 16 inches apart. Mr. Bo came and <coughs> checked everything. And they uh, told the guys that from Tallahassee, you got to come back down and put the soil up where it's supposed to do. Everything I followed the rules and regulations. I, I mean, nothing was never stopped. Right. Uh, they making sure that they did the right thing, the contractors did the right thing. So, I'm not sure how to answer that one, Tom. You have anything there to is, uh, uh, There are a couple of blocks over there, and I don't remember specifically which ones, where modular homes are specifically 
see the name of the uh, Jetty Park change to the Clifford C. Sims Memorial Park. And we discussed that today. Yeah, we talked on the phone earlier today and uh, I told you I would be talking to some people and I hadn't had a chance to talk to them yet, of course. But I don't know what the situation was, how it got named Jetty Park, if it can be changed. Tom, you got any idea on that? I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't. But we'll certainly do a little research. And we'll be glad to look into it and research it and see what we can come up with. And I'll personally <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else on the phone? <coughs> no one else? Okay. Mr. Macron, what's going with you tonight? Mr. Ashbrook? I'm good. Thursday. Yeah, I got something. Uh, we got meetings every two weeks, basically. A lot of activity. Sometimes I don't feel like that I get all of everything, and it may be just because I'm hard to get up with. Uh, my number did change for everybody out there. It's 340-1084. Please call me if you need me. Or if you don't need me, the other thing is Tom. Can you give me, and each of us commissioners, a weekly activity report concerning any LDR activity in the city on a weekly basis or any business that falls in between the two weeks? Because I don't like hearing stuff on the streets before I hear it in the meetings. And I'm not saying that's your fault, but if you could send me an email, maybe it would help me be a little bit more updated. Okay. Um, and one example again, in mind, not sure. not because I don't, you know, most weeks go by and there's not anything that I 
become aware of. And on those weeks, don't send a thing. But if something does come up, send me something. I don't care what it is, just send it. The other thing I got is, is uh, two weeks ago in the Star Paper, uh, there was a letter to the editor, and it was kind of a knock towards me and Mr. McCrone down there. And it was over this uh, mobile home trailer deal. And when I had cancer, I had a lot of people out working, raising money to help send me to get care and treatment. The individual kind of stated that maybe I had forgotten and looked down upon people that live in mobile homes. I just want to say, you know, I was raised with money. My family had money, but William doesn't have any money. I hadn't had any money since I got married and had three children. <laughs> and a wife. I got four, bro. And you got four. <laughs> I lived in a trailer park for about 10 years, uh, not in a trailer park, but in a mobile home. I lived in one myself for about 10 years. I got a lot of friends that live in mobile homes. I do not look down on anybody. I have not forgotten where I came from. And I will get on anybody's level to help anybody that needs help. I felt got kind of worked up about it and it still kind of bothered me. And then I looked at the bottom of the page and I saw who it was and then it kind of made me feel a little bit better. But at the top of it, it started off by saying, I do not live in Gulf County. Well, I shouldn't have even read it then because <laughs> I serve the people of Port St. Joe and the people of Gulf County in any capacity. And I don't care who you are, I'm there to help anybody. There's people out in this crowd today that do not like me. But I'm okay with that. I wish they did like me. But I'm not going to sit there and be torn down by an individual without letting the people know the truth. The truth <coughs> is I'd look down on nobody and probably some of the people that gave me donations when I see probably lived in mobile homes. They may not have even had a home. And I thank each and every one of them. And that's all I got. All right. I got just a couple of things. Uh, you, like how did... Uh, Jones Homestead. What does it cost to get hooked up to a sewer line out there? I believe the impact fees are worth about $2,800. Is that about right? Uh, with the grinder pump, it's uh, 5700 The grinder pump is $2,350. Uh, it's $2,856 plus $400. So it's $3,256 <coughs> impact and tap fees, and then the grinder pump is about $2,500. Uh, just had a couple of residents call me and tell me they would love to get on my sewer system, but not they got to pay that kind of money. <laughs> and, and then again, on top of that, they think they probably got to spend another five thousand dollars going to their house from the road or something. Well, we, we do be, offer the option to to residents to finance two thousand eight hundred and fifty six dollars of that, mm -hmm. so they wouldn't have to come up with the full amount out of pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 5700 They can finance 2008 so they do have to come up basically for the grinder pump. They have to pay for the grinder pump. Right. Um, right. So it's about $3,000 out of pocket, and we can finance 36 months, no interest, on the impact fee portion of it. So we try to help residents out that way uh, because it is substantial, and we recognize that. This grinder pump is expensive. We had a price increase, I guess, about a year ago. We how, how much y'all? Twenty-three fifty plus the tax, about $2,500. The state charges us tax because we're reselling it. But you're right, they do have the cost of hiring a plumber or they can install it themselves. So they will have additional costs. It depends on the length of the run into their property, $1,500 to $2,000 to install that grinder pump on their property. <laughs> yeah, certainly something we could look at, though, is, is how can we promote growth by, by looking at our fees. Certainly something we can discuss, and we can discuss that on the 25th with, uh, with our consultants. Yeah, well, it's just a couple of people call me lately. They're on safety tanks, and they want to get off the safety tank, and we just said it's just yeah. too much money to spend out at one time, and I didn't know about the financing we could do for them. Yeah, and anybody who's in that situation, they certainly can call me and I can look at their situation and get with John and we can 
give them a, a breakdown of the fees and try to help them any way we can. So certainly okay. anybody that's interested, please call in <coughs> and I'll work with them any way I can to, okay. to help them out. Right. Mr. Mayor, just, just for the board to, to keep the back of the money too, you know, we had $75,000 in budget this year for the Cape. I think we're 16, 18-ish. Yeah, we're right around and, and the current project, so there, there's residual funds there that if we want to expend them before October, we should seriously consider that because for October, they're not in the issue next year, but... Um, well, we definitely, I feel like we need to really look at that. The more people we can get off that one night, the better we are, I tell you. That's probably something we, yeah. we really would benefit us to workshop to try to identify a procedure where we, we work out an idea of how we contact people and find out what areas would most benefit us to, to do like John suggests and pushing lines out. Mm -hmm. We need to come up with some sort of plan to try to, <coughs> to lay some more infrastructure in, in those areas that would help our citizens. So when do y'all want to discuss that though? We're running out of time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in October. Yeah, John, we've got sewer lines all the way out. Are they out through Ponderosa? There is. There's, there's the, the main itself goes through uh, Jones on Pedro and Ponderosa. How about the other street over there on the uh, layout there? Uh, I never can remember that, but I think it is Ponderosa where Eagle Landing is. <coughs> you know, it's not on that road. I, know I had a customer call today about the name of the name. Uh, wherever Eagle Landing is with that road name. Anyway. That's Ponderosa. That's Ponderosa. The other one I'm talking about to the no, left, but it's, it's not on that road. It's not okay. on. Is it Palm Breeze? Uh, Palm, Palm Breeze. Palm Breeze. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not on that. But we do have, currently, we do have uh, a surplus in the wastewater fund in the budget, so we could allocate some additional funds in next year's budget, uh, depending on where the, the uh, health insurance play rolls out and, and our decision on, the, on water sewer rates. Okay. So we do have the ability to add some funds for that to carry over to next year if we're not able to get it done this year, currently, in the current budget. We can discuss that again on the 25th as well. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I'd like just to bring up is the tourist corridor that we got the new ordinance on, but you can't park things out there. And uh, I've had a few people calling me talking about, you know, where they have stuff parked that they use in their business, and they're wondering why they can't keep those things parked there. And this ordinance, that means nothing. If you got a business right there, you can't keep your equipment there. I got the same goal. It means it's all got to be gone. Yes, sir. And, uh, and the reason I bring this up, Mr. Little, is because I noticed, you know, you, you're in that corridor, and you have a boat that's been sitting there, and I'm just not sure if you're aware that if you have something sitting on your lot that you need to repair, that it can only sit there for seven days. Are you aware of that? That's a new order that was passed. So if you have any questions about it, uh, I don't know how they'll work that out if you got something. Hook to it and pull it around the block. Hook to it and pull it around the block. I don't mind. And that's, I just bring that up because I see you in the audience tonight and I wasn't want to see if you were aware of that. So I don't know how, you, how we'll handle that situation if somebody brings you something to work on. Uh, I guess they don't need to bring it to you until you can work on it. Maybe I'm not sure. But if you have any questions about that, please call me or come up and talk to us. GM of City Hall, and they'll, they'll explain a little more to you. We'll see what kind of things we might work out on in those type of circumstances. All right. Uh, only other thing I wanted to bring up tonight, and I, I know with some people this is a sore subject, but I'm telling you it's coming. Because I've had I don't know how many people asking about it. That's golf cart crossing on Highway 98. People think it's ridiculous that we don't ever cross it on 98. I mean, that's where everybody wants to go. <laughs> they don't want to come down Reed Avenue and shop. They want to go over here and go to the marina. They want to go to Speaker Wiggly. All those places on that side of town, they want to go there. And, and, and they're pushing me to bring this back up on the agenda. And I promise if you on by the second meeting in September, it will be on our agenda. Because, uh, and I've heard the argument of, you know, we don't have that many. I'm going to tell you one thing right now. If you got 110 golf carts, that could be 500 votes by the time you're through with all of it. By the time you count brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. And uh, so I, I do want to see us cross Highway 98. 
It's just a matter of see if we can get some people to give us some money to help pay the traffic study, which is five thousand dollars. And I think the golf cart association people are willing to put up some money. Some can put more than others. I've had some tell me we talked one time about fifty dollars a golf cart guy to help pay for it. One guy said I just can't afford fifty dollars. Well, maybe he can afford twenty five. No, I don't think we're opposed to that. I don't think the balance board is. We just still, I mean, the, it's not a guarantee. The state has to certify it. Exactly. You know, they so, can cross four lane highway yeah. over there in Panama City Beach. I don't see why we can't cross two lane. Well, I agree with you, but it, you never know what they're going to tell you. you know? I think we're just going to have to bring it up and okay. see how many people are willing to put some money <clears> up <throat> for it and, and then go from there. I've had a lot of people, not just two or three, but a lot of people tell me, when are we going to be able to cross Highway 98? And where can we cross Highway 98? That's another thing. Is it the, state, is it the state highways? Yes, it's the state law. So yes. they can't cross over 71? We can cross 71, but we have a traffic study done. They certified they over here on Reed Avenue that you can cross on 71, but 98 you can't cross. And that's the state that tells us that. Right. That's not us. And they have to do a traffic study, and it runs about $5,000. So we're going to try to see if golf court people that really want to cross it put the money with them out here. What about the, uh, the handicapped mobile people that do these schools? They're, not, they're, they're, they're legal. legal. <laughs> they're legal. They're legal. Because they're about the same as speed. They're legal. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, just everybody be thinking about that because it's coming up. Um, that's all I got. I need a motion to adjourn. Hey, Thank you. Adjourn.